Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to Monday Night Twitch. I am your host, Mike the Wandering Toke, and joining me, as always, is Daniel the Big Foam Loaf himself. Hi, Daniel. It is I. How's How are you? Ah, it's been a week. It's been a, it's week, been a week, but it's good to be back. I am. Uh, I'm technically on my spring break, though you would never know it by the amount of work I did mm -hmm. today. I mean, it wasn't really work. It was just I chauffeured children around my city for roughly 15 straight hours. That's wow. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Sounds like a that blast. was my relaxing day. Yeah, I spent one hour where I wasn't driving or dealing with stuff, and I watched the Vikings Valhalla show. Have you have you started that yet? No, I don't. I have not. Did you did you watch Vikings? Like the history channels. No, I didn't. If not, not, if not, why not? Um, I don't know. You're because crazy I, person. I was yeah. too busy watching Hit Monkey, I guess. Oh well, there you go. So yeah, that was. It's been a day. It's been great. Yeah, good. It's fine, I, man. Um, it's fine. I'm just. I'm blessed with you know liking my kids, so hanging out with them <laughs> is pretty cool. Well, good. <laughs> And one of them yeah. even uh, put herself to bed earlier, I heard. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> kind no, of, sort of. No, no chance of that happening anywhere. All right. Okay, so tonight, uh, this is what a, a... This will be an interesting one. This is a prologue. Where? Get this. Stay the end. Get this. Somebody will die. <gasps> yep. But because we got to do the tease, they always do the tease. That's not till the very end. So what are we doing? We are going to start a new Arkham campaign, and this one will go as long as we feel like it goes, because we're doing Edge of the Earth, which does not have a set length, and we'll end up doing side quests and stuff. Our our guests don't know this yet, but we're gonna we're gonna pull them in. <laughs> hey, they don't need to know everything. Yep, yep. So. Um... Yeah, here we are. So in this episode, we're going to walk through who we're taking, and then we're going to go through some of the base rules and some of the mechanics that show up in all the edge of the earth scenarios, get you familiar with them, and uh, then we'll start the prologue. There's a lot of reading in this one, so Daniel will probably end up splitting some of the reading. I hope so. My goodness. Yeah, right, we can do that. Um, hey, how do I get rid of the little map at the bottom right again? There's a button near the top i think that gets rid of it i think it's above the where is it way up beside yeah over here it's like get rid of the close overlay, overlay. there you go thank you yeah all right okay and of course our viewers didn't see that because i wasn't streaming of course this. all right what are what can <laughs> they see right now they can see my deck and uh switch tabs they should be able to see your deck okay all right so uh, you decided to play a Mystic until about five minutes ago. Correct. Um, <laughs> see, I wanted to play Bob, and I said, I'll probably be a clue person. So you said, okay, I'll bring a fighty Mystic. And then you asked me what kind of Mystic you were trying to build. <laughs> and I said, a fighty one. You said, oh, I'll play Daniela. Something like that, right? It, it was something like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, you yeah. picked Jim. Jim's great. I love, I love Jim. It's been a long time since I played him. But I... <laughs> building him and just wasn't I, I i did that thing i do sometimes where i have sort of a, a half-assed theme that's stupid and i go all in so yeah nobody yeah, does nobody. that i know <laughs> nobody has a half finished deck on arkham db so uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to? um i'll go first all right sure then uh, Daniela Ray goes cold. Take it away, yeah. Daniel. Well, I so I have I'm in the editing screen for you know good reason I imagine. I've not played her. Um, I know that people like her and they probably use her in a particular way early on. Um, I did not go and look at any other Daniela Reyes deck. I wanted to kind of go in here cold. Um, and so my five, I, I thought about what should be my off class things. And I chose, um, 
I chose cherished keepsakes, two jury rigs, which seemed like a good thing to have for my sledgehammer, and a um, Professor William Webb. I have a lot of items or items that I want to pull back. Um, and so he should be good. I won't feel as afraid of like using soak with him. Oh. And then it's a pretty event heavy, you'll see. Um, Counterpunch and dodge and evidence. Toe to toe, which seems to be, you know, I tried to get the edge of the earth expansion things for her because I think that's the point, right? Right. So, yeah. What would you like to see in this that is not there? Uh, well, I, I need you to help cover my butt here. So, <clears throat> okay. Let's see what you got here. Danielle, Danielle is a five fist. Yeah, five. like she just punches and four organically. Will. Yeah, she's very lopsided. Mm. All right, wow, one book, two fleetness. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. She's not running from anything, man, and she's not reading. So, got it. Well, yeah. the, the will's nice. Okay, so uh, we're going to need some fighty-fighty. So what do we got? You've got your... I feel like I've got weapons taken care of, and she's like up close and personal weapons. And it also seems she was born to possess a survival knife. Yeah, I was concerned at first that mm -hmm. uh, you didn't get a, I don't get a high bonus from the knife and stuff, but five fist, holy crap. I feel like that's enough. You know, one, here's a question I had for you, Mike. Should I get geared up? No. Is it's only ten items and they're all great, but it might not be enough. What's the benefit? Right? You can play as many as you want for minus one cost. You play up to three for minus one, but that's your whole first turn. Ugh. It's yeah. It's a nice. It's for it's a neat card. It might not be for this deck. Yeah, there's too many events in this one to make that work. Yeah. Um, so one thing I don't have in this deck is any neutral cards. Gotcha. Atrix saying I... um, scene of the crime. Do you like that card, Catherine? I never have it trigger on me. I always have it at the wrong time. I don't I've know. never seen it get used. I, people swear by it. A lot of people you know, swear by it. I, you know, it could be it could be better than evidence, which I did take. I feel like they're kind of similar. Um, See, but this one's right? fast, right? And see, the crime takes an action. So you're basically betting that I will kill this person. Right. And if I miss, well, yeah. But, you know, Daniela doesn't mind missing, actually. She doesn't mind getting hit back. That's true. So, you know, thinking you know along those lines, what kind of... I probably need some physical soak um, beyond just like the little bandoliers. Uh, you want, well, you want to keep the bandolier. You don't want something fighting. Oh, I do slot. want, I do want, I so do want the bandoliers. Do you want the like true grit and. Uh, yeah. I was wondering like is? that kind of thing. Maybe one of each of those. Yeah. That's a good idea. True grit. And what was the other one you just said? I'm sorry. Uh, something worth fighting for is that the other that's one? the one something worth fighting for on the hunt okay yeah yeah got that I like that so much toe to toe she was made for that oh yeah right like <laughs> um maybe I don't you want me to heroically rescue you I imagine right hard to say it's a big map, right? It only works when you're at my location. True. It's fast. I mean, I'm looking at all the other things you have, and Heroic Rescue is the odd one out. Yeah, but with Daniela, it does two damage. It does? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it yeah. It attacks you, right? So, like, for her, it's just sort of... That's not limited? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right. Would attack another investigator location. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the trick, right? Is I have to be around you. I guess what would have to happen is I'd have to trigger the an attack of opportunity. Right. But then that doesn't count <laughs> against her ability because attacks of opportunity... Oh, no. Except an attack of opportunity you provoked. If I attack... If I provoke the attack of opportunity, you can jump in. That's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting... Uh, you know, here's the thing. Maybe I don't actually need prepared for the worst. I always whiff with it anyway, and there's only one. Yeah. You know, I'm going to get rid of that. That's an easy call, I think. you've got five weapons. I have some weapons. I'll find them. And then maybe get rid of one... Um... Let's counterpunch. Play a... I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just an extra attack during the monster phase, right? Yeah. Maybe I don't need a... Maybe I don't need something worth fighting for, to be honest. You don't need Professor William Webb. Oh, I guess you're you're right. But then I okay, so then it triggers when you successfully investigate. How is oh, that gonna happen? That's not gonna happen. All right, so then I've got a card. A survivor card. Now I remember you saying that you had an idea. But I forget what it was. Some kind of spell. Oh the talisman. The talisman of protection. Oh yeah. It's like a two two soak or something like that. When you assign damage in a horror that would defeat you, discard it and cancel up to two of it. Oh, that's what it is. So it's not quite what we're looking for. Right? Yeah, not quite. Not quite. I don't know. Do you want to? Uh, <clears throat> I know you don't like. You're trying to steer away from the favorites. Are the ones you always play with. Yeah, I mean... I am. Um... <clears throat> Is there a... What's the survivor way to get clues? There's got to be one for being a... No, that's all. Oh, you need lesson learned! Yeah. That's the one you need if enemies are going to be attacking you. All right, hold on. Let me find it. Where is it? Is Am it I... leveled up? I didn't think it was leveled up. Maybe it is. I think it might. Oh, Maybe. you can't even. You... Daniela can't take lesson learned of all people. Uh, yes. Yeah, she... Isn't it a survivor card? No, it's guardian. Oh. All right. So give me one more guardian card. Let's do this. Survivor, you mean, right? Survivor, I'm sorry. You know I don't play Survivor, right? I know you don't know anything about <laughs> these people. They're the uh, class that has the lucky. What about... I do love Granny Orn. Um, I've got enough stuff in my hands. Um... Who's the lady that gives you money or cards? Uh, Madame Lebranche. Yeah, it's like you have no cards, she gives you a card. If you have no money, she gives you money. Mm. I'm not all that jazzed about that. Um, what about... Bandages. I was thinking of that. Um, <laughs> track shoes. That'd be funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, 
She could almost do test of will. Like, oh, she's good that way. Yeah, she could. Um, that might be worth it. Might be, because she's got that high willpower. Alter Fate is a leveled up survivor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, what, why don't we go to yours, and I'll I'll just look at you know one last thing. If someone said something in the chat, that'd be great. But okay, well, uh, I could just do a I just yeah. could do a quick cheap live and learn. <clears throat> yeah, that might work. Or okay. Keep faith. What well, about keep faith? Just for fun. That's level zero. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with keep faith. Just throw that in there. Four blessed tokens in the bag. I like keep faith. Done. I'm done. <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right, uh, Daniel. Sir. Uh, uh I have decided. Do you remember? Do you remember uh, McDog's McDog's deck? Oh, hang on here. I do. I yeah. do. And it was great. Uh, I have decided to not do Bob's deck. Or McDog's deck. I've decided to, to go a slightly different route. Because that, that's Bob the successful salesman. What if Bob oh, boy. was the kind of guy that tried to sell you on timeshares? Maybe owes some people a bit of money and just, just keeps digging himself a little bit deeper. And you know, uh, you know those if? people that like just literally search the gutters for like discarded stuff and try to sell it to you on the street don't i ever that that's this bob jenkins bob jenkins gutter rat so this is a short supply underworld support deck the idea being you don't find two matching pairs of mittens in the gutter you only find one so underworld support and short supply because i like caldera decks from lord of the rings so uh let's do some some discard pile shenanigans so a couple of the tricks that Ben pulled off are in here. For example, using scavenging to get back stuff. But right. I only get one copy of everything in mm. this deck. So every game I like that. is a little bit different. Well, you told me last time, rightfully so, the Lily deck I played was very... It was very consistent. It was almost same from game to game. And it was designed you to You have the same game eight times. And it's because I had stick to the plan, which is for 10 experience, you get to have the same game eight times. And I guess you like that. It worked. It worked. It worked. You were okay. This is the exact yeah. opposite. Okay. And I think you're gonna have I think you're gonna have a lot of fun playing this deck, Mike. Uh, I have played a similar deck before. I this is going a slightly different direction. But the idea okay. is I have got a whole bunch of survivor cards that try to make sure I get scavenging out and other things to help me go about my life. And then when I level up, I'm, I'm going for gold. Mm -hmm. I, I am currently playing with the red clock and the Eon charts. Holy moly. Are those awesome? I do have the, the leveled up joy, the rat, cause he is just too good to say no to. Okay. So the, this is all in, in an ideal world. My opening hand has scavenging in it. In, and uh, then I throw away, oh, let's say uh, one weakness and nine items. That would be the best way to go about it. Uh, that's obviously not going to happen, so you have backup plans. Because if I get scavenging in the discard pile, there's no way I can get anything out. So I've thrown in <laughs> scrounge for supplies, which is choose, choose scavenging when it's in your discard pile and put it into your hand. And if that doesn't work, I have resourceful for pulling scavenging back to my hand. Okay. If for whatever reason I don't need to scrounge for supplies on the scavenging, I can use it on something else, like a level zero well connected. I can level that up, but I don't know if I will. Because it's just a really nice thing. Level zero Bob struggles a bit for sure. skill boosts. Sorry, his level zero version. His leveled up, yeah, he got he's got tons of options. So of course I got lots of items, uh, and since I'm going the scavenging route, it makes sense that I leverage his book and put in a bunch of stuff to help my my intellect. 
So I've got the flashlight, the gravedigger shovel, which can be used to fight, but he's not not really a great fighter in this build. The old key ring, and then I threw in pocket telescope. That lets you investigate a revealed location as if you were there, a revealed connecting location. And that's awesome. Four book isn't like fantastic, that. but I've also thrown in a copy of jury rig. I think I could jury rig a pocket telescope. Will that happen every game? I don't know. I might end up just discarding it. Yeah. <laughs> Neb Neb. <laughs> Big phone blow. He says, don't I ever. He says, how many times have, how many times shares have you bought, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, zero. But I have been in three different meetings to get free stuff. Oh, Lordy. You know how they do that? Like we were in like Key West. Yeah. I like like they you sit in a room for like an hour and listen to some spiel, but you get like goodies. I don't I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> we were we were younger then. Uh, okay. I suppose. You know, and we thought it was also really clear that we were just not their market, but yet they roped us in anyway. We're like, well, let's just it's a couple glasses of wine and like a bag full of trinkets. So Cool. Maybe you'll get We're a time on vacation share. anyway. Yeah. 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 And we didn't get, you know, roped into a timeshare. So I think that's fine. <laughs> See, Bob did rope a couple of people into timeshares and they're not happy. <laughs> so... Danielle is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just no. follow you around and try to get my money back. See, and, and I'm, I'm skedaddling to another <laughs> continent. I'm trying to go to Antarctica <laughs> where those people will not follow me. There's no way they're going to follow me to the ends of the earth. No one's going to go to Antarctica. No. The literal end of the earth. No way. Okay, so my, my five level zero rogue cards are, of course, Underworld Support, Well Connected, Pocket Telescope, and mm. then I threw in Quick Thinking because it's a handy... It's handy. I don't have Clue Compression because I'm not a seeker. So my Clue Compression is actually Action Compression that I'll use to get more clues. Or maybe just to put out more stuff. We'll see. Okay. And the last one is you handle this one because you have four willpower. You know, you're such a jerk. But hey, I can also give you enemies, right? Yeah, I can give you enemies. Hey? Eh? No, you... I, I think it's great. I think and, it's great. And I get money. <laughs> Emergency cash, of course. And then uh, I decided oh. to pull in Winging It and Impromptu Barrier. These are the two cards that you can play from the discard pile for an additional benefit. Okay. So I took the Evade one and the Investigate one. What's also cool is this is a small deck because it's only 25 and I'm discarding the top 10 cards. So winging it oh, yeah. ideally can cycle a couple times. Ideally. We'll see if that happens. You're going to have so much fun, Mike. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Every game is going to be build. completely different. Yeah. The, in the build I, I'm playing at home with physical cards, I have I randomly drew Offer You Can't Refuse. And uh, that one lets you start with XP. So I, I started with a hot streak. But uh, it's the one where you have to pay $5 when you draw it. If right. you don't, you get the card that where you have to pay $7. And then if you can't, it's $10. And if you can't, you go insane mm. or something like that. But, so this is going to be a different, different go because I have the devil this time. I cannot play assets other than the devil while it is in my hand. And if it's drawn in my opening hand, I cannot replace it. That Ooh. stinks a bit. That does stink a bit. Yeah. We'll see. Greed means I have to take to keep money. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm taking the, Schwaf uh, the Schaffner's catalog, which uh, can help. I believe Bob workplace. Jenkins is required to take that card. I think he is. Shrewd yeah. Dealings is a great card. Maybe I'll get to play it. It's not an item, so I can't recur it if it ends up being discarded right away. <laughs> Uh, I've got bandages, the sour mash, leather coat, cherish keepsake. Yeah. And then I've got, you know, my skills. Unexpected courage, cool. perception, manual decks, last chance. Because Ben was just stuffing himself with cards. I don't I don't do that. No. I'm I'm the gutter rat. I yeah. probably not gonna have a lot of cards in my hand. In fact, I don't like drawing my deck. What I found on my other play is that you want to keep that discard pile, and if you haven't 
discarded your weakness, you know your weakness is in there and it's coming up really, really soon. And maybe it's greed and you don't want to take four horror. Right. So right. I find that's like I only use the perception if I really, really need to draw that card. Anyways, that's, that's so uh funny. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be different. It's gonna be a touch. Uh, I want to say it's like too slow to set up because he does have the extra actions to play stuff, but he just lacks compression in so many areas right now. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Most well, exciting. I think I think these decks are going to be interesting together. I think so. I think they'll work really well. Yeah. Um, on a lighter note, did you see my note to you in the chat? In the chat. Uh. I'm on the Twitch stream chat. Oh, know? in the Twitch chat. Yes, I do. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> so you're one of our, our <clears throat> listeners tonight. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm wondering about this. Like, should we should we put in for you a copy of Scene of the Crime just in case it's actually the best card ever? <laughs> no. No, I'm done. Okay. You heard it. You heard it from the man himself. Catherine, it would never be used. What I do like about having that big event suite, though, is I feel like it it's going to be really interesting leveling up with Daniela. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to get um, weird fast. Because all that blue is going to turn red, and I'm going to have to play a very different game, like... Like by scenario three, I'll be like a, I'll be a totally different person, Mike. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that'll be interesting. So you know, Catherine's going to start a counter now for every yeah. time you could have used Scene of the Crime. Yeah. I know. I know. What a bully. What a bully. <laughs> you know what? I might do it um, just so I can see if the card's any good. I'm going to say, hey, Catherine, in chat, just to see if she's there. <laughs> Um, well, all right. So, do we want? Oh yeah, let's. Uh, is let's... it story time? Not yet. Not yet. It's it's mechanic okay. time first, and then we'll go to story. So let me just okay. Uh, let me just see if this works here. We're gonna swap on over. Hey, look at that screen transition. So everyone in chat, you should be able to see the screen transition. If you if you don't see the board state, uh, let me know. I see. A board state. Beautiful. Okay. Edge of the Earth has a few little things that we need to be aware of. First things first, we got a bag of new tokens. Oh, nothing like a bag of tokens. Yeah, these are these are frost tokens. Now, even oh, though this, this bag says that there's an infinite amount, there actually isn't. You can only have a maximum of eight tokens anywhere in your game. And there they are. Yeah. So um okay. not that it's good having, you know, seven or anything. So what does this token mean? This token is it's similar to curse in that when you draw it, it's a negative and you draw another okay. token. This is a negative right. one and you draw another token. The kicker being if you ever draw two frost tokens in the same test, that is an auto fail. Now, are there ways of getting rid of frost tokens, Mike? I will tell you, there are ways of getting rid of frost tokens, and there are ways of getting frost tokens. Okay. And one of them is easier to do than the others. <laughs> Gee, I can guess which. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, since we're playing the campaign that has these tokens in it, they're going to do other fun things with the encounter cards. I'm so excited for this campaign, Mike. Again... You've played it, I imagine. I'm going blind. I'm two thirds of the way through. Yeah. Yeah. I that means I get to make all the stupid decisions, right? Pretty much. We also have this this deck called the <laughs> De Kelly Lee deck. And this deck is a bunch Wait, how did you pronounce that? Is it Tekeli Lee? That's how you use it. Uh, okay. That's I assume it's like that. I would say Tekeli Lee, but that's me. It's it's the techie it's the Tekalili deck. It could be the Tekalili deck. Or what did you say? You said uh Tekeli Lee. Tekeli Lee. I don't know. 
I think they're both great. <laughs> anyway, Tekka Lili is a little more fun to say, but we we would call it the the Tiki deck usually. To Kelly Lee sounds like someone I like went to high school with. <laughs> All right, this deck is a deck of sixteen weaknesses. The difference oh. being, okay, weaknesses. Yes, these are weaknesses, and you will draw a lot of them. As with all other weaknesses, they become part of your deck. The difference is these are single use. Once they come out and do their thing, they always you they always say, you know, you put it at the bottom of the deck. Okay. So So you won't ever see it again, probably. Never say never, but that's the idea. <laughs> that's the idea. And okay. I think uh I can't remember if there's four different types or eight different types. And it's all like do something bad and then Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Now, Mike, I'm looking at the campaign setup in the uh, thing, and in standard, we actually start with one of these frost tokens. Oh yeah! Wow! That's oh yeah! Just... Oof. Of course. Okay. Of course. All right. Okay, All right. and then we have the partners. And this, this is... is the part I'm most excited about in this campaign. These are specifically called partners. They yep. are ally traded assets. They do not take up the ally slot. And this is the other thing. The only way they can leave play is by being defeated. So if you draw a Crypt Chill and you have to discard an asset and it's the only thing you have, it whiffs. Because you cannot discard these people. Okay, because defeated means reduced your health or your sanity, right? Correct. They retain their health and sanity damage between scenarios. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. And if they die, they die. they die. At the beginning right. of every scenario, we each get to choose one of them to slot to put into play immediately. Okay. And they all have fun effects. And we'll go through their effects later. Sure. We'll, we'll go through them maybe during the prologue. I don't trust the guy who's just a single name. Have you read Dan, the the Mountains Dan of Madness? Um, long ago, yeah. Uh, Professor William Dyer and Danforth were in the original. Okay. the The book is written from Dyer's perspective. Danforth is the one that goes a little cuckoo. Um, mm. and what's awesome about this? There's lots of story. And and we're all about story. We're, we're not about dodging story. it here either, are we? There's actually so much story that he's put in a mechanic where you don't read all the story. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what we got from chat here. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, one frost token is fine. It's when they multiply. You have to worry. Yeah, when there's like three or four, that's when it's really Well, fun. it's still like a little minus one curse thing. I don't know. It's Yeah, it's... It's that auto fail, right? No. Okay, so since there's tons of story here, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is uh, we are going to alternate scenario uh, the prologues. So I'll do prologue okay. one and three. You'll do two and four. You get the bigger section, but while you're doing the bigger section, I'm probably going to interrupt you and uh, and show the the chat what's okay. actually happening okay and then you know what we're actually going to look at we're going to do the beginning of uh of ice and death as well we're not going to play the game we're just going to do the introduction okay because i promised you uh one of ice or death okay <laughs> so daniel would you like to uh get on your reading glasses and read prologue one I'm right there right now, Mike. I'm looking right at it. I actually have my, my live book out. Cool. And I, I totally messed up already as I'm looking at this. You only read one, a couple of them. It's all right. <laughs> Just go ahead. <clears throat> Prologue one, right? Prologue one. You understand now, yes, why this expedition must be stopped? Professor William Dyer sits across from you at his office desk. A wealth of academic papers and scientific journals lies sprawled between you, including Dyer's own lengthy account of his journey to the Antarctic. Up until the publication of this revised report, the alleged 
truth, the university's last expedition to Antarctica yielded very little in the way of scientific discoveries. At Dyer's request, you'd read through this new report of what really happened beyond those mountains of madness, as he dubbed them. You scarcely would have believed any of it were not for the bevy of photographs and drawings that came along with it, evidence of mangled, dissected bodies, of perplexing five-pointed snow graves, of strange specimens found half-buried in the ice, and finally, aerial shots of the jagged black peaks, peaks described in Dyer's tale. Dyer has called on you to help convince his colleagues to abandon their plan to follow up expedition. His student, Danforth, the only other member of the expedition to reach the alien stone city described in Dyer's report, paces back and forth by the entrance to Dyer's office, muttering nonsensically to himself while you consider their strange tale. You are still unsure what to make of all this. On the one hand, Dyer's concern seems genuine, and his account is filled with such detail and specificity that you find it difficult to doubt its authenticity. And yet... There's no way it could all be true. An ancient city in the ice built by primordial beings? So-called elder things? How could such things be real? Danforth mumbles something about a nameless black pit as you place Dyer's report back on his desk. The professor gazes at you with sleepless, bloodshot eyes. Well, Dyer asks, will you help us stop this madness? Will you make them see reason? Wow, Mike. Yes. So, uh, but Mike, haven't you and I been doing this long enough that we would nece not necessarily uh, question this account? I mean, pretty much. Now, now Dyer's okay. big thing is you should <laughs> never, ever go back because the things there are so horrible. Like he actually comes back, and his whole his whole reason for existing now is to prevent other people from going back to Antarctica. All right. So. <laughs> so we have some choices to make, Mike, right away. Right yeah. away we have a choice. Choice one is to tell him, I believe you, but if what you say is true, should we not investigate these findings further? Or, I'm sorry, but this seems too wild to be true. And of course, you're going to pick this one. Oh, you know it. You know I am. And I think... I think I want to do the thing that most people might not in their first playthrough. Mike, I'm going to say I'm sorry, but this seems too wild to be true. Uh, okay, then... That's the first first thing you can put in our campaign book. Uh, well, that doesn't go to the campaign book yet. Oh, you'll see what oh, goes okay. to the campaign book. We're going to okay. skip to Prologue 3, and I'll take it from here. Thank you, sir. Dyer's jaw clenches and his cheeks redden. For a moment, he looks as though he's about to slam his fist on the desk between the two of you. But after a moment of consideration, he takes a deep breath and shakes his head. I suppose to any reasonable person it should seem that way. Perhaps my faith in the scientific community was misplaced. Of course, Dr. Kensler would not believe me, not even with all the evidence. He shoves several of the photographs on his desk aside in frustration. You explain that Dr. Amy Kensler, the scientist leading this new trek to Antarctica, is motivated by genuine academic curiosity rather than greed or glory. It matters not, Dyer remarks bitterly. Even so, she seeks more evidence of my findings, despite my warnings. And so the cycle continues. Perhaps science itself is not but folly. We are but silly little mice under glass, seeking escape for our own sake, with little understanding of what lies beyond our cage. Dansforth approaches, eyes fixed on the photographs scattered across Dyer's desk. Perhaps what we saw is nothing more than the overactive imagination, imaginings of two explorers with a queer fascination for the bizarre and macabre, of Arthur, of Arthur Gordon Pym's ill-fated journeys. Dyer's eyes narrow at his student. The knowledge reflected in his dark eyes chills you to your core. You say such things, and yet, I dare say, you did not see what I saw. The student scoffs. You are not the one who glimpsed that mirage at the edge of the mountainside. I'm not referring to the mirage, Danforth. I'm referring to what I saw in you, Dyer retorts. The things you said on that aeroplane, the look on your face, I'll never forget. Silence pervades the room as Danforth returns to his corner to languish in his own doubt. Dyer pleads with you. Whatever the case may be, is there nothing I can say to deter you? you explain that the only way you could possibly believe his story is if you saw it with your own two eyes. Very well, then. 
Dyer rises to his feet. Since you lot have no clue what you're getting into, I suppose we have no choice but to come to. You tell Dr. Kensler, she wins. We'll be ready to leave within the week. You nod and make for the door. I hope, for all our sakes, that Danforth is right. Yeah, it's before you're out of your shot. In your campaign log, record, the investigators did not believe Dyer's report. Add a broken tablet to the chaos bag. I mean, really, Mike, how could these things be true? It, there's no way. You're a salesman. I'm a mechanic. We've seen some things, but yeah. come on. Have you seen these mob right. goons? As long as yeah. you don't have mob goons right. in Antarctica, I should be all right. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I all like right. the reference. I like the reference to Arthur Gordon Pym. I know, eh? <laughs> That's a nice Poe story for those who haven't read it. But even better, Mike, if you can get your hands on, and it's not hard because it's in print, um, <laughs> the book called Pym by Matt Johnson. It is so good. It's like a retelling of Arthur Gordon Pym. It, but yeah, it's yeah. Right. You and listeners and viewers and chatters, Pim. I by will Matt Johnson. I will add it. To You'll the list. love it. You'll love it. It's funny and irreverent and all good things. All right. Well, we now continue to prologue four. So you peer I... up at the overcast. Sky. Oh, you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I'm going to uh, take. After uh, every time you introduce someone, I'm, we're going to take a moment and look at their card. Just so you oh, know. Oh, okay. So, sure. Go ahead. You peer up at the overcast sky, hoping it does not forebode things to come. Only a sliver of sunlight peeks through the clouds. You shudder and pull your coat closed over your shoulders. Then continue onward to the edge of the Boston Harbor dock. Gather each of the cards from the expedition team and counter set. As you read the rest of this prologue and each member of the expedition team is introduced, find the story asset from that encounter set that matches the name and acquaint yourself with that card. Is that what you were saying, Mike? That's exactly what I'm going to do. We shall be acquainting ourselves. All right. The expedition team encounter is indicated by the following icon. Looks a lot like the frost token. Not going to lie. Yep, All right. It's, it really does, and it <laughs> scares me whenever I see it. <laughs> Standing in front of the flankway leading up to the deck of the Theodosia is Dr. Amy... Kensler. Now, do you want me to read her whole bit, or now stop? Oh, uh, for this one, I'll, we'll, just, we'll look at her. Okay, so she is a, a unique, of course. Ally, Miskatonic, traded. Partner uses three secrets. As Ooh. an action, spend one secret and exhaust Dr. Amy Kensler. Investigate with a base book skill of five. If you succeed, look at the top card of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck, and you may discard that card. Mm. So, Daniel, maybe there is some investigation in your future after all. I will see. If I if I hang out with the doctor, yeah. A professor, you know, this doctor, Mike, is a, uh, a professor of biology at Miskatonic University. The no-nonsense scientist has been a fixture of the university's sciences department for over a decade. Without so much as peering up from her clipboard, she crosses off your name as you approach. Good of you to make it on time. Mr. Ellsworth here will take your luggage aboard. Oh, I will, will I? The man standing next to her replies with a chuckle. He offers you his hand in introduction, and you shake it. Rold Ellsworth. Ellsworth, at your service. Rold Ellsworth, the intrepid explorer. He is miskatonic and a wayfarer. Partner with uses five supplies. As a free trigger action, during an investigator's turn, exhaust Rolled Ellsworth and spend one supply. Choose a treachery attached to any location. Treat that treachery's text box as if it were blank until the end of this turn. This turn. So that's your investigator's turn. All this card does is fill me with dread. I have been all over the world. Please, just trust me. <laughs> By way of introduction, Dr. Kensler explains, Mr. Ellsworth has been on over a dozen expeditions and comes highly recommended. I'm sure his expertise will be invaluable in the weeks to come. Ellsworth rolls his eyes. His expertise, yes. And his willingness to be used as manual labor, he adds with a chuckle as he hefts your luggage and takes it up the plankway. Come on, Ellsworth, shouts another voice from inside the ship. A gruff-looking man with a thick brown beard emerges, motioning for Ellsworth to hurry. 
We got a ton of work to get done before we embark. A little busy, Cookie, Ellsworth shouts back in reply. Then he turns his back to you and remarks over his shoulder, Do not mind him. Cookie's a bit of an intense fellow, but he's all right. The name's Fredericks, the man barks back. James Fredericks, I swear. Sometimes I think I'm the only one here who's ready for this damn trip, he mutters angrily. And didn't anyone ever tell you it's bad luck to name a ship after someone who died at sea? <laughs> James Cookie Fredericks, the dubious choice. An ally, a veteran, and a wayfarer. He has three ammo. As an action, spend oh. one ammo and exhaust James Cookie Fredericks to fight with a base fist skill of five. If you succeed and the attacked enemy is non-elite, it cannot attack for the remainder of the round. You don't want this person, do you? <laughs> I probably won't be hanging with James Cookie Fredericks very much. <laughs> there's, there's no reason for you to do that at all. Uh, that's, that's a yeah. possibility for me. No, I ain't leaving my damn gun back at camp. <laughs> <laughs> Another voice calls down from the deck of the ship. Cookie, if you could be so kind as to lower your voice, some of us are trying to work up here. The man responds with a grunt and ducks back inside the ship, rolling his eyes. You crane your head upwards and see a young woman leaning over the railing of the ship deck, her long brown hair tied in a thick ponytail that dangles around her neck. Hey, you made it, she calls out to you. Dr. Kenzer is pretty excited that you're coming along. Looking forward to working with you. Without looking up from her clipboard, Dr. Kensler mumbles, Mrs. Takata Hiroko in our, is our airplane mechanic. As with the previous expedition, we'll be constructing our planes out on site. No need to worry. She may be one of the youngest in her field, but she knows what she's doing. Takata Hiroko, the airplane mechanic. She is a wayfarer and an ally. Uses nine resources. Oh. Action. Exhaust Takata to move up to three resources from her into your resource pool. Nobody knows now these there's someone we can better than I do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> More of the crew begin to arrive one by one. The first is a man in his 30s with a wispy blonde beard and bright green eyes. Mr. Avery Claypool. Dr. Cleansley introduces you to the man, and the two of you shake hands. Mr. Claypool is an associate of Mr. Ellsworth's. He will be serving as our guide in the Antarctic. <laughs> Weather permitting, Claypool jokes. Honestly, we'll be lucky if we can even get off the ice shelf. Avery with your skills. Avery Claypool, the Antarctic guide. He is a wayfarer and an ally. Uses eight uses his five supplies. As a reaction, when an investigator at your location reveals a frost token during a skill test, exhaust Avery Claypool and spend one supply. Cancel that token and reveal a new one. It does not say cancel and re and return to the bag. It says cancel and reveal. So, so he actually eats the frost. Well, it'll go back after the test. That would explain his uh, little red nose. <laughs> Look at his heart. My goodness. Weather is turning foul again. I would tell you to turn back, but I gather you would refuse, right? Right. I'm confident that your skills will make it as far as Dyer and Lakehead. That's what I'm afraid of, Claypool mutters, walking briskly past Kensler and up the plankway. On his way up, he passes Ellsworth, and the two freeze, locking eyes. You can swear that the temperature lowers several degrees. The two brush by one another without a single word. Are they usually on better terms? Dr. Kensler says under her breath. But recently fell into some issue or another. They had better learn to live with their differences. They'll be unable to avoid one another for quite some time, after all. You watch as Claypool's gaze wanders back to Ellsworth for just a fraction of a second before he turns away angrily and enters the ship. The next to arrive is a woman with warm brown skin and weary eyes. Along with her luggage, she carries a rather large, bright red medical kit emblazoned with a white cross. She extends her hand, and you cannot help but notice the nervous tremble in Dr. Kensler's hand as she shakes it. Thank you for joining us on this voyage, voyage Mala. Oh, Amy, somebody has to keep you alive, she replies. There's a moment of awkward silence as Dr. Kensler glances up at the woman, then down at her feet, her cheeks tingled red. Right, <laughs> well then, she remarks, and continues up the walkway. Dr. Kenzer clears her throat, and once she's out of earshot, Dr. Mala Sina is our physician, she explains. It took some convincing to get her to join us, so try not to abuse her expertise with insequential problems. Frostbite will be a very real concern, as well as gangrene and hypothermia. Try to stay on her good side. You're unsure if Dr. Kensler is joking. Dr. Mala Sina, the daring physician, ally and wayfarer, uses three supplies 
As an action, spend one supply and exhauster to heal two damage from an investigator or another another ally asset at your location. Want to survive this trip? Good. And don't get on my bad side. A man's voice pierces the sudden silence, along with the clamor of a dog barking. On you, damn it! On you! Don't run off like that, he shouts. That will be Mr. Ashebuk, Dr. Kenzer says, scratching off another name from her list. Moments later, you watch as a large, gray-furred dog bounds towards you, its tongue hanging out of its mouth in excitement. You lean over to pet the dog, running your hand around a thick, long fur. The man finally catches up to the dog, huffing with effort. Anya! Come on, I thought I trained you better than this, he says, catching his breath. Elia Shevik is our dog handler, Dr. Kensler interjects. He's in charge of taking care of the 44 slug dogs we're bringing along with us, not to mention their feeding and training. Elia Ashvek, the dog handler, ally and wayfarer, uses three secrets. Action, spend one secret and exhaust Elia to evade with a based skill of five. If you succeed, you may move to a connecting location. Anyu's got the scent, haven't you, girl? Anyu here makes 45, he corrects her before turning to shake your hand. Also, we'll be holed up in the ship for a while, so let's drop the formalities. Just, Elia's fine. As the man and his enormous dog board the ship, you ask Dr. Kensler if she received the letter you sent regarding Professor Dyer's concerns. I'm well aware of his report, Dr. Kensler replies. But as I've told him time and time again, I have no intention of ceasing or postponing this expedition. Just then, footsteps approach behind you, interrupting your conversation. Speak of the devil, Dr. Kensler mutters, looking up from her clipboard. You turn to find other than Professor William Dyer and his student Danforth, each toting several bags of luggage. I'm glad you finally decided to join us, William. Amy, he acknowledges. I'm not here because I believe in your mission statement. I'm here to make sure you and your companions not get themselves killed. You have no idea what you're walking into. All right, so that is Professor William Dyer, the professor of geology, ally in Miskatonic traded. Uses three secrets. Action, spend a secret and exhaust Dyer to heal two horror from an investigator or another ally asset at your location. Doubt of the real facts, as I must reveal them is inevitable. He has one hit point and five sanity. Wow. He's yeah. smart. And stable. Indeed. <laughs> and uh, Danforth, the brilliant student, Miskatonic, ally, uses his five secrets. After an investigator location resolves a Tekalili weakness, you can exhaust Danforth and spend one secret. That investigator draws two cards. Danforth was a great reader of bizarre material. He looks kind of like a young Mel Gibson. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah. We'll have to kill him first. <laughs> All right. Will he be the <laughs> one who dies? We will see. Then you'll have ample enough opportunity to educate us all along the way, she turns to address young Danforth, who's staring up at the tanker ship with a pained expression. Danforth, I hope you understand that you are under no obligation to come along in this expedition. After everything you went through, she trails off, her eyebrows raised in a worry atypical of her usual cold demeanor. I appreciate your concern, Dr. Kensler, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity to return to Antarctica. I want, need, to be there again. She follows his gaze to the Theodosia, which bobs steadily up and down on the choppy Atlantic waters. Very well. We're still working to get all of our equipment aboard. Mr. Ellsworth can help you find your rooms. You nod him a good morning, along with the remaining crew and the rest of the expedition team, mostly students of the university, along with several unaffiliated explorers and several researchers in a variety of fields. Once more, you spy the scant sliver of sunlight above before it is smothered by gray clouds. Mike, these nine characters will be our partners throughout the campaign. Their various talents will be crucial in the scenarios to come. However, if you wish for this expedition to be successful, it's imperative that you keep them healthy and sane. <laughs> yeah. In the expedition team section of the campaign log, you can view the status of each member of the expedition team. As they are injured or begin to question their sanity, update the campaign log accordingly. You'll be instructed when to do this, Mike. As each team member is killed or driven insane, cross them off the list one by one. Oh, it's so ominous. Oh, no, wait a minute. I know. <laughs> try to keep alive. Do try. Try. Well, you know, we'll do our level best, won't we? 
We will do our level best. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different. Normally, we read this just before we start playing, but we're not going to tonight. Uh, we're not going to play, so we'll uh, we'll do the reading, and then next week we can start the actual gameplay. So just so you get an idea of how this works, if I scroll up to the top of the screen here, there's a total of five scenarios. And uh, you can finish this in, what, four, I think? Or is it five? Uh, but it can take as much as, I believe, ten different plays to get through, based on the things that you do. For example, like these have, these are not just single scenarios. Some of these have two or three sub-scenarios embedded in them. And it's not, it's not one scenario divided up into three. They are actually three distinct scenarios. It's just they're, well, you'll see, but they're very nicely packaged together. So I don't want to say more than that. You'll, you'll see as we go through. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's, uh, why don't I give Daniel a break? Thank and, you. And I will read the scenario one, Ice and Death intro. It has been a long eight weeks since you left Boston, and not without its toil. The Theodosia followed much the same route as its predecessors, the Arkham and the Miskatonic. First sailing southward along the east coast and through the Panama Canal before venturing toward the Antarctic Circle. As the weather grew steadily colder, icebergs became more and more of a problem for the ship to navigate. But with the crew's expertise and the logs of the previous captains who made the same journey, you make good time. Soon enough, you spy the mist-covered peaks of Mount of Mounts Erebus and Terror ahead. Yeah, we're going to Erebus and Terror. Um, It'd be great who trip. named those things? It'd be a great Good trip. Lord. Marking the site of Ross Island, near the ice shelf that will serve as the expedition's landing spot. As you approach the coast, Dr. Kensler and the rest of the team meet aboard the deck of the Theodosia to discuss your plans. We'll use the same breaches buoy system as before to unload supplies onto the ice shelf, she explains. Mr. Fredericks, Mr. Ellsworth, and Mr. Claypool, you'll be taking one of our smaller boats to the shelf to find us a landing zone. Ms. Takata, once we have camp up and running, those airplanes are your first priority. Mr. Ashevik, I expect those sledges to help move the supplies from the landing to camp. As soon as we reach the ice shelf, there's going to be a lot of work to get done in a very short time. I don't want you to have to wrangle three dozen dogs on top of all that, so get them in order. Elia rolls his eyes and idly pets on you, who sits diligently by his side. Yes, ma'am. Professor Dyer speaks up. I suspect the lack of ice melting and boring equipment means we aren't taking any mineral samples, he asks rhetorically. Dr. Kensler shakes her head. No need, although if we happen to find a suitable piece, we might as well claim it. That said, our mission is solely to corroborate the findings you made with Danforth and to bring back more evidence of this ancient species, these elder things as you dub them. A living specimen would be ideal, of course. Such a strange and alien beast trapped in ice throughout the ages it would be like discovering a live woolly mammoth, I imagine. He balks at that. A living specimen? You do know these things killed several of Lake's men, right? And how do you propose we capture one exactly? She blinks. You're the expert, William. You tell me. Dyer walks off, shaking his head and muttering angrily. I knew this was a bad idea. All right, you all have your assignments. We will reach land within the hour. Be ready, Dr. Kensler says, dismissing the meeting. Before she can go below deck, you approach and remark that you aren't sure what you should be doing just yet. Oh, there will be enough manual labor to go around, she replies with a hint of a smirk. We're manual labor! Ugh. That's going to be uh, worse for you than me, I think, Bob. I think so. I, I'm not... I'm more of the running away from big people type. Yeah. <laughs> the chat, I love it. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Nope. <laughs> Love it. Doom, doom, doom. Ice and Death Part 1. Are you doing this or am I? I'll do intro one, yeah. Okay. After two weeks and many hours of hard work, the expedition is ready to make its first foray into the cold, dead continent of Antarctica. Miss Takata, along with two other mechanics, have fully assembled three aeroplanes along the flat ice shelf, a perfect place for takeoffs and landings. Your team congregates by the aeroplanes, along with several days' worth of camping equipment. But the plan is to fly two of the planes over the vast, jagged peaks, taking aerial photographs of the stone city mentioned in Dyer's account. That is, if such a thing really exists. <laughs> if we can find a safe, yeah, right. If we can find a safe landing zone, we'll get some, some temporary outposts. Doctor Kensler explains. Dyer, Danforth, Fredericks, and Claypool will stick around while the rest of us head back to camp. 
We can use the sledges to ferry supplies to and from the camps. Otherwise, we'll simply scout out the area and head back to base camp. The team nods in agreement and begins to board and begins boarding the planes. If Winifred Havemach is one of the investigators, proceed to intro two. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Well, I I believe the art on Daredevil is intro two. I think. Oh, that's neat. I like that. Yeah. Do that. But anyway, uh, we don't have her. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like I better read uh, intro three then. You better. Buckle up, your pilot says. You climb into your seat and get ready for the flight. One at a time, the two planes take off from the ice shelf and soar into the opaque fog. The rough Antarctic winds and low visibility make for poor flying conditions. But nonetheless, you venture through the beautiful and deceptive polar mirages over miles of icy wastes and barren snowdrifts. Dr. Kensler peers out a window as you pass a magnificent view of distant mountains like vibrant, enchanted castles floating above the clouds. They're beautiful, she remarks quietly. These are nothing, Dyer begins. Wait until you see... And then the storm hits. The winter winds are so sudden and fierce that they almost force you out of your seat. Both planes shunt to and fro in the horrid winds, and you hear several of the passengers shouting behind you. What in the hell? Frederick grunts. We have to head back, Claypool shouts. These winds will force us down if we keep going. We're so close, Dr. Kensler growls bitterly. We don't have a choice, he yells back. But it's too late. The plane lurches toward the ground, and the pilot struggles in vain to regain control. All of the other passengers notice the dark shape in the sky at the same time you do. It is a massive shadow, like a curtain drawn across the mountains, or perhaps the tattered wings of an antediluvian behemoth. It scowls at you with dreadful, hollow eyes. Then it reaches out, and... <laughs> As you regain consciousness, intense pain sears throughout your blist through your blistering skin. Through the haze, you can barely hear muffled shouting outside the burning husk of the airplane. Somebody grips your arm, pulls you from the wreckage, and hurls you into the soft snow. More shouts erupt around you. There's another! Quickly! Grab my hand! You rise to your feet with a world of effort. Miraculously, you're only bruised and winded. Most of the other team members are similarly unharmed. Except... Da -da -da -dum. At this point, mm. we group all of the partners together, shuffle them up, and draw out Danforth. Um, I'm. How did you know? I drew a random card from the deck. <laughs> I'm watching your Twitch. <laughs> so you announced it before the Twitch saw it. Oh yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, I thought you were guessing. All right. Nope. Don't. Danforth. There's a okay. delay. There's a delay. Yeah. All right. I'll read it. Okay. No. No. Professor Dyer tugs at Danforth's lifeless arm with a single shaking hand. Why did I allow him to come? Why was I so foolish? Why? He berates himself. Dr. Kensler places a hand on his shoulder. I'm the one who let him come, not you. The blame rests with me, she offers. Professor Dyer lowers his head in resignation. Perhaps. Perhaps now he'll be able to truly rest. His troubles and his demonic visions are finally at an end. He reaches out to touch the student's cold forehead, but is pulled away by Claypool and Fredericks. Come on, Claypool says. We don't have long before nightfall. We have to get a move on. Dyer nods grimly, but you see dark thoughts swirling behind the veil of his wide horrified eyes well look at that Dan for huh. of all people we lost the student we lost the student all right I don't I don't know what's gonna happen now Wow all right so the the tiki deck we're not gonna get any help from Danforth card draw on that no. So at this point, uh, we're going to pick it up uh, whenever we play this next and start the first. Which I scenario. hope is next week, sir. I think it, I think we better do it next week. We'll we'll do some I alternating do again, uh, but it's probably best if we start this off next week. Uh, so start thinking about which partner you want to take with you. They're wow. all useful in some way. They're all great. I mean, Cookie for me is one of those backup choices. 
that yeah, I may yeah. never use, but it's get me out of a bind. On the other hand, Claypool's always useful. Uh, Ellsworth so is with the so is Takata. Always useful. Takata, always useful. Amy doesn't really do much for me. Uh, Aliyah doesn't do much for me. Or me, really. Yeah. But we might find ourselves needing them just to, like, take hits. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or... Oh, wow. Cookie only has one sanity. Okay. Yeah. Who does? Cookie. Oh. I could see myself hanging with Dr. Kensler or Dr. Cena. Since I get hit a lot, I might need to be traveling with a doc. Oh, yeah. I also like Takata's money. So it's hard to say. Well, keep it. Well, yeah, yeah. Because of your events, you'll want her money for sure. Now, let me ask you a question. So she comes with nine supplies, right? Mm -hmm. Say, Let's say like Takata, right? Um, Are those nine for the campaign or? Nope. Because you're supposed to track their... You just track their health. Hey, Lisa. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, we get to reset our decks in between scenarios, so so do they. So do they. Mike, this is so exciting. I know. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be, yeah, exciting and scary. Well, yeah. All right. So we're already up a broken tablet. and or We're already down, I guess. A broken tablet, a frost token. <laughs> A, some doubt in Dyer's report, and we're down one Danforth. Let the let the scenarios begin. All right. Seems like we just are all about losses so far. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if anyone has any suggestions for who we want to take, we'd love to hear them. Well, we've got all week, so just you know, shoot us up on on Discord. I'm wandering too. You, you of course, are big foam loaf, and uh, yeah, we're gonna. We're going to get doing this. So um, this ice shelf, um, not the greatest place, but uh, there's a wonderful, wonderful spot just around the peak there. Uh, I think you could probably get three or four people in in with you and uh, you could you could enjoy some nice, nice vacation down on the South Pole. <laughs> you could uh, brag to your friends. You were down there. And, uh, oh, look, I found this watch on the ground. Want to buy a watch? There you go, Neb Neb. One. <laughs> One. <laughs> Mike, thank you. This was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I like doing this. Okay. Yep. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. We will, we will be back next week. Have a good one. Indeed. Good night. Good night.